In this video, I want to talk about a program called Talix that I've been using recently, and that is a big powerhouse, a time saver for the shell. So first, I just want to say using the shell is a way to save a lot of time working with the computer. You can quickly navigate folders, you can find anything on your computer. I use that Z command to navigate around my projects. RPG, if I type that, I can find any folder related to OpenRPG. I can type uh, video to find my video projects, or I could type a Z project, for example because I use a projects folder in my videos folder and of L I can list all the video projects that we are currently working on or the videos we've recently edited, many things like these. So this tool is a terminal emulator. It allows you to do things like these. With control alt A, I can automatically split my terminal windows and I can jump from one to the next with alt and the number of the terminal that you can see in the title bars. Now, this allows me to run processes in parallel to one another. So let's say I'm in my video projects folder. I can go, here's the video from yesterday. So yeah, I'm going to go to 0120 and I want to render the navigation to the video. So I'm going to have a small terminal window like that on the side and I could go use BPS render our multi-threaded render tool for blender videos so I can use a few workers here a few threads to render the video uh, I will get the video itself type enter and just let the program work in the background while I can jump to another terminal and start another job so this is why you use a tiling terminal system like that it's very convenient because you can see the output of one command in some area. So right now it's rendering the audio in the background. And at the same time, you can jump. Let's say I want to work on the website. So I'll start typing website and uh, I want to start the server. But first, I'm going to open the website in my text editor. So I'll type. Uh, I'll do that in the window on the left. So I'll go to the website folder, GDQuest website, and I'll type emacs dot so open this folder in emacs my text editor which will jump right in front instantly and from there i can navigate the project and find recent documents i've worked on or i can go to any file to write anything and in my third terminal I can go type Hugo server. Hugo is the engine that powers the website and typing this command will automatically reload the server, reload all the files and rebuild as I modify them, as I write new articles, modify the website styles. So from there, I can control click. I think that's control clicking yet yeah, on the URL to automatically open it in Firefox and get to work on the website, I content, modify it. It's all open source, by the way. And so in the left terminal, while one video is rendering here in the second terminal and I'm rebuilding the website on the right, I can keep doing commands and doing things on my computer. So I'm going to kill the processes and to close the terminals here. This terminal emulator is really good for a few reasons. One, it's part of the GNOME project, or at least it uses the GNOME interface. So it looks really nice. It's animated. It integrates well with Ubuntu and similar desktops. It has a great amount of customization, but it's not overwhelming at the same time. It has very good defaults. It looks good and you can create individual profiles with different color schemes and also for tutorials for recording. It's great. It also has that quake mode. So if I go back, for example, to Emacs, I've registered the keyboard shortcut Super T to bring a shell like that in front of all my programs, wherever I am on my computer, can just bring it up anytime. I don't have to switch back to the window, which is a big time saver as well. So the good thing with that, and this is more, um, this has more to do with the terminal, but say I download a bunch of zip files on with Firefox, I just bring up the terminal. So Z download will typically go to my download folder, just have to enter here. And from there, I can unzip all the files. So one thing I could do is uh, I can find all the zip files and I'm going to do a loop over that. So for, yeah, I already have the command that 
that's auto completed for me. So once I've typed one command or some instruction once, I can very quickly reuse it. So this will unzip all the files in the folder and there are certainly more efficient ways to do it. But I'm doing a loop. So for every result that I get from the find command that will find all the zip files, I unzip that file and that's it. So I'm going to press enter. I've probably unzipped them before, but there you go. It's unzipping all the files for me. If I download, for example, 10 zip files, I can just start to type this command, press enter, unzips everything. And when I go then into my file browser, so I can call Nautilus dot, it opens in the background and you can see all the folders and my zip files have been unzipped. I can also, by the way, delete them. So I could do, I think, rm uh, all the zip files like this. And if I list all my files, you won't see any zip file left in here, which is why you want to learn to use the command line because as you learn these commands and learn to compose them together, you save more and more time working with your computer, moving your files around, and you learn to work with the text output as well, which might seem confusing at first, but it soon becomes second nature. That's one thing we tend to forget, but we've learned to work with UI based programs. And even if they are designed to be more intuitive than pure text, you get used to anything you practice enough. But that said, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Try Tilex. If you have the subsystem, Linux subsystem for Windows, you can also download it on Windows and use it there. And if you are on Linux, it's in your package manager. I really like it. I should mention that there are some programs called Item2 or Tmux, for example, that are probably better known and used by a lot of developers and engineers. You can try these. Tilex is more user friendly, I would say, a uh, non developer friendly. It looks a little more polished. The font is a little bigger. As you can see, you have the big title bar and all. And for video recording, for me at least, it's a great program. So um, I recommend to check it out. That said, thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, and let's see one another in the next one. Bye bye.